Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm out on a walk with Malik and I thought I would take uh, this moment of the walk to talk about what is a primitive breed and how is it to live with a primitive breed because I do think it's a little bit different than living with a regular dog. So when it comes to dog breeding, the Victorian era is important. That's the time where a lot of dog breeds become more and more domesticated and where they get functions as either a pet dog or whatever you would call like a household dog or a working breed. So the Victorian era is kind of where the dog loses its independence and becomes more of a tool and a companion to humans in a more structured way. You get what I mean. However, the primitive breed stays kind of the same uh, throughout this time and into modern time. What's interesting with these breeds is that breeders of these breeds often refuse or avoid cross them with other breeds. So they are very much in their like original form so to speak you try to keep them in line with how they originally looked and their original purpose and you try to avoid crossing them with other breeds so they stay as close to the original as possible basically they often have aesthetical features that you don't find in more domesticated breeds Wait. <laughs> silly goose so they often have very typical body design, which is close to a fox or a wolf, basically. So that means they often have pointed ears. They have a long muzzle often. They often have almond shaped eyes. They have a long wavy tail often. So you can often tell which breeds are primitive breeds because they don't look like the domesticated breeds, which has sometimes like floppy ears uh, or they have short tails or a shorter muzzle and stuff like that so you have for example the Shiba Inu that's another primitive breed the Swedish Laphund is a primitive breed for example the Alaskan Malamute is a primitive breed but I do think they are a little bit more difficult to live with than a domesticated breed to be honest. I sometimes say that he is 30% a sighthound and 70% a primitive breed. So it's basically like living with a dingo. <laughs> and I mean, they are all dogs. So it's not like you're getting a wild animal in your house. But I think the relationship looks a bit different because it's not like the primitive breed, the dog won't be super interested in pleasing you. So living with one is more like having a roommate where you have to sign agreement contracts. <laughs> like you have to be on board with each other and what comes with that. It's not like you can form a primitive breed to whatever you would like it to be. It has personalities and instincts that are very obvious and that kind of goes into living with one and you have to take you have to do the research and you also have to be prepared that it will come with some difficulties sometimes. So when it comes to training a primitive breed and I'm talking from the perspective of owning a ferrah hound, it might be different if you own a chow chow or a husky or an elk hound or a lap hound. I can't speak for those breeds, but I can at least speak for my own experience with my ferrah hound. Many trainers label these dogs as stubborn, dominant, untrainable, and I think that's wrong. I don't think they are untrainable or stubborn. I think it's about understanding their qualities and their personalities and their instincts. And when you do that, they are definitely willing to work with you and do fun things with you, but they're not craving it all the time. They're not craving that you work with them. It's when you don't understand their characteristics and their instincts, you can find them stubborn and untrainable. But there is ways to come to a mutual understanding of what we're doing and get them on board with that. Because primitive breeds 
are very intelligent. So if you feel like your primitive breed, like your ferret hound, doesn't want to work with you, either you are too challenging or you're not challenging enough. That's usually where it goes. Either they find it boring and they don't want to do it because it's too easy or you're too challenging you're asking too much and they don't figure it out that means they become tired and bored so you have to find that balance on how to train them they are also very intelligent so they will kind of work out in what situations you want them to work and when they can ignore you so they will see a pattern of your behavior and act accordingly so you have to be innovative you have to be curious about why they're doing stuff and how they do it and you have to be kind of in tune with them to train them in the right way for the situation basically but primitive breeds are also quite demanding as pets but if you give them the time and a chance to flourish they will it's all about having patience and creativity then they will flourish in any setting in any behavior i also think if you're getting a primitive breed remember that Things will take a little bit longer than with a domesticated breed. It can be anything from potty training to learning to teaching them not to bite on the sofa or ruin furniture. They will get there, but it might take a bit longer. And I would also say if you're getting a primitive breed, if you're getting a ferret hound, they often mature later. So you will have a teenager for a long time and you will have to be prepared for that. Malik just turned two a few is it two weeks ago boo boo? Come. Um and I see a slight change in his behavior now. I feel like he's starting to grow up a little bit. I just told everyone you look like a fox, is that true? Can we do an interview? Malik would you consider yourself a fox? <laughs> yeah. Would you consider yourself independent? Yeah. Would you say that you're not domesticated? <laughs> okay, bye. The thing you should know that I think is talked a little bit too little about and I want you to Listen to this and try to understand what I mean. If they learn that biting and growling will get them what they want, for example, you to step away from them or not using a harness or whatever it might be, they have a tendency to use that behavior. They will in a sense stop using calming behaviors and start using aggressive behaviors to get away from discomfort or basically just not wanting to do what you're telling them to do it could be move from the sofa it could be putting on a harness it could be clipping nails primitive breeds uh were created prior to this Victorian gene manipulation. So they were never bred to be in the center of a family setting, uh, like a golden retriever or, or working like a Labrador or a German Shepherd. I feel like domesticated dogs have been bred so much to have quite a big threshold from discomfort to aggression because they have been bred to interact with humans so much. A primitive breed have not bred for that kind of interaction with humans in the same way they could uh, use more direct and quote unquote aggressive behaviors to uh, get what they want as they would do in the animal kingdom or with other dogs or similarly. However, I'm not saying that primitive breeds are more aggressive as such. I'm not saying you should be afraid of your dog or afraid to get a primitive breed because they uh, 
their threshold is lower. I'm just saying it's something to take into account that don't be surprised <laughs> if uh, you all of a sudden hear a growling in a situation from a, from a primitive breed. Uh, if that happens, I would suggest you to go to a good trainer that are uh, that have experience in primitive breeds uh, because they are usually really good at telling you how to deal with that situation. And I also think talk to your breeder uh, if it happens. I'm not saying you should go into buying a primitive breed thinking they will be, thinking they will use these um, methods. Uh, but if they do, talk to your breeder. They usually know about it and they can help you. I think a good way to minimize the risk of this happening is to lean into what your dog is made for. Uh, by that, they get their instincts fulfilled. For example, Fairhound, I would suggest try lure coursing. So they kind of get their purpose fulfilled. Uh, then you would have a calmer and more satisfied dog. If you don't fulfill your dog's needs and instincts, as well as putting in boundaries and structure, you are, leave your, you are leaving your dog to their own devices and to their own communication. And that's where these more aggressive methods of communication might be exposed and flourish. And you don't want that, obviously. Uh, learn different kind of communication uh, so listen to their communication be very in tune to their communication as well as put in structures and boundaries structure and routine is really important for them so their brain doesn't go on overload but again I'm not saying the primitive breeds are more aggressive or more of a bite risk I'm just saying their communication looks a bit different than a very domesticated breed and you have to take that into account when you're buying one because you will have to be the one training it. <laughs> so. so I would say primitive breeds are fun, exciting, high drive, a lot of personality, and you have to be prepared for that. But they also, be, they also become like your best friend because they are goofy, silly, independent, uh, maybe not the cuddliest dog you will ever own. They need, at least fair hounds have a lot of personal integrity that doesn't mean he doesn't sleep on top of me at night he does and lick my face but he also has moments of the day where he goes away and sleeps alone in the kitchen for example so they definitely have a strong independence big goofballs and funny faces right. don't they little foxy so thank you so much for uh, watching this video with us Till next time, take care of each other, take care of yourself, and take care of your dog. Bye. Bye, Malik.